How do we get to that fucking flag? That's hard without uh, range weapons. Alright, I'm, I'm just gonna run for it then. Huh. I'm just gonna run. Oh wait, no, 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 no. There's, a, there's, a, there's a tank here. Hi guys, this is Matthias. And in this video I'd like to share 10 tips for Battlefield 1 on how to not be a noob. Number 1. If you are in a tank and you realize that there is no way you can save it, do not leave it and abandon it. Either stay in and die with it, or jump out and destroy it yourself. Because if you don't, your enemy team who might be controlling the area where you left your tank will be able to pick it up and use it themselves. And aside from the obvious advantage of just having another tank, your team is going to be left with one tank less for as long as this tank is still alive, regardless of what team is using it. Number 2. On the other side of this very example, if you're able to damage the tank enough so that the tank driver jumps out, make sure that you kill him and pick up his kit, because in order for you to be able to repair this tank, you need the repair tool. Now obviously you or one of your squad mates might have the repair tool equipped as a support player, but if you don't, you want to pick up the kit of the tank you just killed. And yes, you also need the repair tool in order to be able to repair while inside of the tank. Yeah, it's the default. Oh, I haven't been in this one in a long time. I think I'm dropping uh, supply with this one, right? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can resupply and heal you and stuff. Number three, learn your gadgets and abilities. Still using this tank as an example, since I play on PC, I can press number three to activate the emergency repair, something that is very useful, of course, for my own survivability. Now, this tank can also drop one large medkit and one large ammo box. This is of course very useful for your team, assuming you use it correctly and you don't drop it near your enemies like I did here, because that could work against you. I can heal this guy. Hey you Toxie, Tox Toxie, I can heal you, I can heal you. Oh shit. Enemy armored car sighted. An enemy armored train has arrived. <laughs> now don't forget, we all start off as beginners and we all make mistakes. Oh no, the important thing is whether or not we have the ability to learn from it. Look, there, the scout. <laughs> I only have the pistol now. Wait, I can I can, oh, can take mine yeah, yeah. I can take my kit. Don't Here, divide, don't yeah, okay. Number four, remember that you can pick up the kits of recently killed players. Whether it's an enemy player or a teammate, doesn't matter. And who knows, perhaps you'll actually discover something new, and the weapon you picked up might be something that you want to spawn in with in the future. Holy shit, the Mondragon at range is... Number five. This will answer the second most commonly asked question on my YouTube channel. And even though I've covered it before, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, you can shoot with the AT rocket gun while standing up, assuming that you have something in front of you that allows you to deploy the bipods. And this bipods works the same, regardless of what weapon you have them on, but the AT rocket gun and the tank gewehr of the tank hunter elite class are the only two weapons, as far as I know, that requires you to deploy the bipods in order for you to fire. Number 6. Equip a grenade that fits your playstyle, the way your squad plays, and the map. The most commonly used grenade that I have is the light anti-tank grenade. And that is because most of the maps that we play on has tanks and other vehicles, and we normally take it upon ourselves to counter enemy vehicles. However, on maps such as Argonne Forest, for example, unless I forget it, I replace it with another option, such as the stick grenade or the impact grenade. Number 7. Situational awareness and map awareness. One thing that plays a big part in this is your minimap. Now, if you do not like the default size of the minimap, you can change it. I think the default value is 100, mine is at 225, but even bigger is very common. Get wrecked, fucking tank! Saw him on the minimap. 
now to change the minimap you click on options you go to gameplay and then you scroll down a little bit and drag the value to whatever you want it to number eight flank now as much as you want to be able to predict whatever your opponent is going to do try to not be predictable yourself now a good flanking run normally starts with a good spawn and many times they are there you just have to make sure that you recognize it now being able to engage your enemies from behind or from an unpredictable angle will not only allow you to rack up easy kills but it will also help your team progress in a place where you're stuck in a choke point Number nine, remember tip number four. I'm just kidding, guys. Getting a good flank isn't too bad. Oh, there we go. Number nine, try to locate and remember stationary weapons where they are placed on the map and what to use them for. Now, if you know that there's a bunch of snipers looking in your direction, you probably don't want to use a stationary weapon at that point in time. It's also important to remember that if I'm in the opposite team and I'm in a plane, you really should not use any kind of anti-air. Three guys. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. So now before we move on to the 10th and very last tip, remember, Battlefield 1 is a game, and just like any other games, it's meant to be played for having fun. We don't have to be the best players. But if you try your best, and if you, to the best of your ability, try to help your team out, then you are most likely going to be appreciated for it. One of the most thrilling experiences in a Battlefield game is to be part of a functioning squad. Perhaps you were able to take out the tank, not because you killed it, but because you dropped ammo at the right time to the right assault so that he had yet even another grenade to deal that last bit of damage. Perhaps you are that medic that revives two or three guys at a capture point that allows your team to either defend it or capture it. Actually, I'm also going to add a half tip to this video. This is tip nine and a half. Spot your enemies. Now me, as a veteran of combined arms games, such as the Battlefield series and Planet Side 2, this comes very natural. I don't always do it, but I do use the default key Q, and I keep spamming it all the time. Actually a little bit too much, considering how uh, spotting has been changed over the years. Oh fuck, uh, sentry. Coming from B, of course. So now for the last tip, number 10. If you go on a bit of a YOLO run and you do relatively well, you might find yourself with almost no ammo and very low on health. Now there is an alternative way of resupplying and healing yourself without picking up other players' kits. And that is to get up on a horseback. And you will see me do this in a moment. Now the moment you are on the horseback, your character, no matter what class, is very similar to the cavalry class. Lag. Holy fuck. You can use a cavalry sword, you have an extra grenade, and you can drop a one ammo pouch and one bandage pouch right away. The cooldown until you can drop them again is also the same. All right, we'll go. We'll go D, uh, B. Oh. Oh yeah, sentry is almost dead. Son, I is dead. All right, nice. Halfway there, we have the upper hand. Oh, I really have no medic. No, I'm, I'm dropping some meds on with the horse, but. So here you can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, the moment I get up on the horse, I have the two weapons and the two gadgets of the cavalry class. I do however not gain his higher amount of hit points. And if you're looking to level up your cavalry class, you have to spawn in as it. So yeah, that's all for this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it and that it was helpful. My name is Matthias and I want to thank you all for watching. Yes. I got it, but uh, I was sniped.